Greetings, Saxon one half, lesson six. We're gonna talk about decimals. We're gonna spend a lot of time talking about fractions and decimals and percents this year. Our goal is to have you 100% comfortable and fluent, if you will, um, in those three languages. I think of fractions, decimals, and percents as related languages, and we learn to translate back and forth. So we've talked about fractions a little bit, and now we're gonna talk about decimals. The important thing to remember is that every f number has a decimal, even if you don't see it. If this is the number 427, there's a decimal right there. And we know that these digits have place values. This is the ones place, this is the tens place, this is the hundreds place. We know that sometimes we call this units. John often uses that expression. Instead of calling that the ones place, he calls it the units place. And that's fine, it's the same thing. But there are also places on this side of the decimal. We know these keep going, right? Thousand, ten thousand, hundred thousand, blah, blah, blah. They also go in this direction. And what happens here is that the best way to name these places is with a fraction, which is interesting. This one is, we call it the tenths place. This is the hundredths place. This is the thousandths place. This is the 10,000th place. I went down just because I was running out of room. And then this one is the 100,000th place. And just like this way, as we move to the left, we just keep adding a zero to every place, right? This way, we just keep adding a zero to the denominator as we move on and on. So it's pretty easy to remember which place you're in. Here is a chart in the book, right here on lesson six, that shows decimal place values. There's the decimal, and here's units, tens, hundreds, thousands, and on and on, just like we talked about. John put the commas in, which is nice. And then when he goes to the right of the decimal place, there it is, tenths, hundredths, thousandths, ten thousandths, hundred thousandths, millionths. Notice the ending sound on each of those words. It's the TH to show that it's a fraction. It's thousands and thousandths. Um, that is really annoying to try to say clearly, and I stumble over it nine times out of 10. That is why most people, let's say that we have this. John's gonna teach us that the proper way to say this number is 427 and, the decimal always says and, 56 thousandths, or no, hundredths, I'm sorry, I'm, not, I'm talking about that place value, but it's this one. 56 hundredths is the way we would say that. That is extremely cumbersome. What we can say instead, and most mathematicians do say, is 427 0.56, that is the more uh, conversational style that most mathematicians use. It is the conversational style that I will use, and it's the conversational style that I invite you to use. 427 and 50, at, no, I'm sorry, 427.56. We say the decimal, and then we pronounce each digit. What we do not say is 427.56. This is not 56, so we're never gonna call it that. It's 0.56, okay? We'll talk about that a lot. You may catch me making mistakes because I get loose and chatty sometimes, but that is the proper way that mathematicians say it. What John's gonna do in this lesson is he is going to force us, challenge us, challenge us is better. He's gonna challenge us to use this T-H-E style. So we're gonna practice saying 427 and 56 one hundredths. All right. Um, 
Read the digits to the left of the decimal point, just like you always do. Say the word and. Read these digits as if they were a whole number, 56, and then say the place value of the last fraction. So 427 and 56 hundredths. All right. I'm gonna just show you in the book how some of these problems work. Read the numbers, then write them with words. Okay, so here's the first one. We see the decimals right there. This first part I can read the way I'm used to. 4,165 and 162, but what place is that? Tenths, hundreds, thousands, ten thousandths. So it's 4,165 and 162 ten thousandths. And there it is right there, there's the th sound. Look, that's what you have to do, you guys, I'm really sorry. You have to write that all out. You're gonna get a sore hand, I'm very sorry. The most important thing is remembering that TH at the end. What about this one? Oh, Lord have mercy, it's even longer. This one, I'm gonna show you how I would do it. This is example 6.1b. And what I'm modeling is exactly what I want you to do. If you can do it, if the number's small enough and manageable enough that you can do it without writing it down, go for it. But this one is too long. It's seven. Okay, for the number on the left of the decimal, I'm gonna put in commas every three digits. Okay, now I can see really clearly. It's seven million. 108,000, that's all we have to say, and now I have to remember how many this is. It's 10, 100,000, 10,000, 100,000. So I'm gonna write down the place value of the smallest digit. So I'll do the whole thing again. 7 million, 108,000, and 21,578, hundred thousandths. Make sure you add that on the end, okay? Ugh, that's a lot to write. I apologize, you guys. We have to just hack this out. Okay, example 6.2, let me just show you. Use digits at a decimal place point to write each number. This time we're gonna do the opposite. He writes the words, we write the numbers, okay? So the first one is, 15 and 31 hundredths. Here's the way I would do it. This is A. Okay, he said 15 and. So that tells me it's 15 and means the decimal place. 31 hundredths. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure I have my spaces right. That's tenths, that's hundredths. Okay? I'm gonna write this in just so I'm sure. And he says it's 31 hundredths. So I wanna make sure that the one of the 31 goes into the hundredths spot, and then I just go backwards. So it's 15.31, that's the right answer. Okay? B, 203 and 25 thousandths. All right, 203 and 25 thousandths. Remember, we pay attention to the, the place value first, thousandths, tenths, hundredths, thousandths. So this is my one thousandths place. So that means the last digit has to go there. 203 and 25 thousandths. That means the five goes here, it's 25. What about this? We fill it in with a zero. Let me read it again, 203 and 25 thousandths. It's tricky business, right? But that's the right answer, okay? So you're on your toes, you're being careful, you're using this chart, if you like, to help you manage some of the, the names of these decimal places. But quite quickly, I'd like you to work on memorizing that. It's okay if you, if you have to go through and name them all to get them in the right place. But that's not something you should have to memorize as a chart. It just, you can figure it out every time you need it. Okay. If you understand it, you don't have to memorize it. 
Example 6.3. Let's practice doing a little adding and subtracting with decimals. The first one is a trick. John's suddenly gotten into this A and B thing, which is a sneaky way to squeeze more work in. Okay, he tells us to add these two decimal numbers, and the annoying thing is that when we add decimals, we don't want to do it like this, side to side. We want to do it up and down, because the key is we want to line up the decimals together, right? So I'm going to write this underneath here, and I'm going to make sure the decimals line up. 0 0.04. Okay, now I see, look, this one has three decimal places, this one only has two. So you can leave it like this if you don't mind, but you can also just pop in a zero. Uh, and he tells us to add, right? All right, so I'm gonna put another addition sign there. Now it's easy because as long as we keep the decimals straight, we just add one, seven, two, six. That's the right answer. Yay. B. Uh, here we go, 6.23 minus 0 0.044. Again, annoying, he made us this way, but we wanna go down. We line up the decimal places, 0, 0, 4, 4. And look, here we have three on the bottom and two up above. So again, we can plop in zeros, that won't hurt anything. And we want to subtract. Okay, sometimes students like to do this. Once they've rewritten the problem down here, just draw a little line through it so you don't get confused and think that's something you're supposed to be using. All right, let's subtract. Zero minus four, well, that's not helpful. 10 minus four is six, I like that a lot better. Two minus four, nope. 12 minus four is eight, one. Right answer. Boxing. Okay. Ah, oh, so exciting. Rounding decimal numbers. All right. I think we talked about rounding already. All the same rules apply. This is another one where it's really helpful to copy the number into your homework before you start trying to work on it. Two, one, two point. You guys, here's the thing. I always want to be realistic about what you need to copy in order to do the homework problem easily and what's a waste of time. You can trust me to give you good guidance on that so that you're not wasting your time, but you're making life easy on yourself. I'm not here to have you do work just for the heck of it. All right, round this number to the nearest 10 thousandth. Okay, this tells us that we're on the right side of the decimal. Tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands. We circle that one because that's the digit that we're rounding. So it's either gonna stay a five or it's gonna go up to a six. Those are the only two choices. Um, and we look at the next digit. I'll put my arrow up here. Usually I put it below. This digit tells us whether to stay or go up. If that digit is from zero to four, we stay. And in this case, we would stay at the five. If it's from five to nine, we go up. So this is a seven. It tells us to go up. So now we can rewrite our answer as 212. This part all stays the same, zero, one, six. Our digit goes up. So that's it. We don't write anything more because that's what rounding does. It knocks out all of the smaller bits of the number so that we have a shorter, simpler number. And this is correct. Right? Everything else just gets wiped away. That's the whole point of rounding. Okay? Um, rounding, this used to confuse me. Somebody has to decide what place we're rounding to. Otherwise, you don't know what to do. There's nothing that tells you how to round, someone else has to say, uh, round to this decimal, this place value, this decimal place. Okay, that's 6.4. Here's another one. Round this big number to two decimal places. 
All right, let me copy it and then I'll tell you what's slightly different about this problem. No harder, just a little different. Two, one, three, eight, three, six, two. I make my decimal big and fat. Sometimes if you just have a little scrawny pencil, you might um, wanna just really accentuate it so that you can tell where that decimal is. Okay, there are two ways to tell us where to round. One is to say the name of the place. Like last time we were told to round to the nearest 10,000th, so we had to figure out what place that is. And we counted 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000. This one's easier because it says round it to two decimal places. So all we have to, we don't have to know the value of them. We can just go, okay, our answer is gonna be rounded to that. This number tells us whether to stay or go up, right? Um, the rules are zero to four is stay, five to nine is go up. This is a three that tells us to stay. So our rounded number is 4,057.21. Yay. Final answer of the last problem. Yay. Let's take a quick look at the practice. Boy, okay, you guys, here's what I'm talking about. Use digits and a decimal point to write each number. There's one written out, don't have to do that one. Here's the part that's annoying. Use words to write that number. It's gonna take a while, so just, you know, take a deep breath and make it happen. Add or subtract as indicated. Remember, we line up the decimals. Round it just like we did here. It tells you which place you're rounding to. So you'll find the hundred thousandth place, circle it, and then look at the digit to the right of that to decide whether to stay or go up. All right, lesson six. Oh, isn't it a relief, you guys, to have relatively short, straightforward lessons compared to those beasts that we started with? I am happy. All right, I will see you next time. Good luck.